Good morning, happy Sabbath. We want to welcome you to our online service this morning here on Facebook. We're so happy for you to be here. Uh, we are welcoming you from your pastor and your first lady. Uh, we thank you so much for your presence this morning and we're going to get into uh, a couple of announcements now and we thank you so much for tuning in and we pray that God blesses you throughout this service. Let's get right into the message this morning. I'm so excited again to be with you, to be able to share the word of God uh, and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe this morning, um, the word of God has a special message for us, uh, just for us in these uncertain times. Um, and this message revolves around um, not only the end times, but also what we should be doing in the end times. And I pray that we receive the blessings that God wants from for us during this times, of, during these times of uncertainty, during these times uh, where uh, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of moving parts, and we're wondering, God, is this the time where you're going to come? Is the is the end near? Uh, where are we as it, as it refers to Earth's history? Uh, and we are going to look at God's word to get some encouragement, but also get some instruction on where we need to be mentally, spiritually, emotionally um, uh, in these last days, in this end time uh, that we're living in. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and read where we're going to come from today, and then we're going to get right into our message. Um, the message today is going to come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to be throughout this first uh, epistle of Thessalonians today, throughout all this first epistle, but we're going to focus on 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to see what God's word has to say for us. The word of God says this, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. The word of God says this, but concerning the times and season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. This is Paul talking to the church in Thessalonica. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Verse four, but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should not overtake you as a thief. Verse five, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not in the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Look at this as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Verse eight, or I'm sorry, verse seven, verse seven. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Verse eight, here we go but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Verse nine, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. In verse 11, therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Um, this, 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 this particular passage of scripture is very, very important. I, and I believe it's super important, specifically dealing with the day in which we're living, uh, giving us some hope, giving us something to look forward to. Um, for, for the relief of God's people, God's sons and daughters, sons of the light, as the Bible says, sons of the day. Um, and we are going to see what Paul uh, 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 says to the church and what Paul could, could, could give us today um, during these crises. I'd like to speak under the title today, Reset, Realign, Restart. 
Let us pray. Father God, once again we ask you, speak your thoughts, fill our hearts, blow our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this particular passage of scripture is very, very important because um, we know that Thessalonians has a great, great deal of encouragement when it comes to uh, believers, uh, especially believers that have uh, laid to rest loved ones that have fallen asleep in Christ. Um, and, and similarly with us, uh, the church in Thessalonica was going through some challenges. Um, uh, in chapter four, you see that Paul uh, comes out with uh, these, these things that are going to occur during the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the things that the church in Thessalonica was very shaky about and their faith was not solidified in was what was going to happen when Jesus came with their loved ones because they believed, um, you know, due to uh, the, the, their religious background and due to all the things that Paul taught them when he was actually there, uh, they, they, in their minds, they did not hold um, uh, uh, on a, a solid foundation. They did not uh, really comprehend what Paul was talking about when he was talking about the second coming of Christ and the things that were going to happen. Uh, so Paul wrote them this letter to encourage them about their loved ones that fell asleep uh, uh, in the Lord. Um, whereas they, the church, believed that they would never see their loved ones again, Paul wanted, to, uh, wanted them to rest assured that if they were to fall asleep in Jesus, one day when Jesus comes again, he's going to blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise first and they will be caught up to meet him in the air. And these things were encouragement to all of the, the, the believers there in Thessalonica and it gave them hope of one day being reunited with their loved ones. So Paul wanted them to see or to, to be encouraged based on the truth that Jesus is indeed coming again. But one of the problems when Paul was explaining the things that would happen uh, during the second coming of Jesus, one of the things that, that, that creeped into the minds of the, the believers there in Thessalonica was, Paul, when are these things going to take place? Uh, uh, it, do we need to wait 50 more years? Are these things going to happen in 10 more years? Paul, when are these things going to happen? And I suggest, and I submit to you today, the answer that Paul gives uh, uh, Thessalonica, this church there, uh, the Thessalonians, the answer that he gives them is the answer that we also need to embody, take into ourselves, and really comprehend so that we are not focusing on the wrong thing. So where is Paul gave them, uh, uh, gave them the hope and encouragement in chapter four In chapter five, he has to almost pump the brakes with them. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've talked about this before. If you remember uh, last time I come and this is uh, just a refresher to you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this thing, but I want you to remember that last time we, we, we were together uh, and starting in chapter five, but concerning the times and season, brethren, look at Paul talking. You have no need that I should write to you. So Paul does not spend a lot of time talking about uh, the, the times and seasons referring to the coming of the Lord. That's not the thing that we should be focused on, the times or the season, because Paul says, he makes very clear why we shouldn't focus on those things, is because for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And this whole idea of a thief in the night, even in modern terms today, we know that we can't really uh, uh, judge or schedule our time around when a thief is going to come because the whole uh, IQ or the whole uh, mentality of a thief is to come when the house owners or the homeowners are not at home or where the store owners are out uh, uh, running errands. They want to come into a place where there's least amount of resistance, uh, least amount of, of trouble when they get in. They want to get in and get out before the owner gets back. So uh, as a thief in the night, uh, that's what the Lord's uh, second coming is paralleled with. 
So Paul tells us we don't need to spend any time on that. We don't need to uh, 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 trouble ourselves about things that we uh, that that's uh, uh, frankly above our pay grade. It's above our, our rationale to be able to comprehend. And the reality is, it's not only above our pay grade. The Bible says in Matthew 24, the angels don't know. Uh, it even goes so far, Jesus himself is talking. Not even he knows when he's coming uh, 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 in the clouds to receive us to himself. Only the Father knows. So as far as us being focused on, Jesus, when are you coming again? Uh, uh, are you going to break through the clouds in the next 5 to 10 or 15 years? That's not for us to know. It's not our business. Uh, I'm biting off of Dr. Myron Edmonds. He's, he preached a beautiful sermon uh, uh, pertaining to the second coming of Jesus Christ out of Matthew 24, and I'm going to link it um, in our Facebook page. But I want you to understand Jesus uh, uh, makes clear in Matthew that we don't need to be focused on that. But Paul also uh, piggybacks on this when he's talk, talking to the church of uh, Thessalonica. And I want you guys to understand what Paul is telling uh, the, the church and what he's also telling us. And there's some things and some lessons that we can learn from. First thing, I, 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 I want to start from the beginning. The church in Thessalonica the Bible makes clear, and Paul is, is encouraging them in chapter 1, chapter 2, uh, chapter 3 even. He's encouraging them and, and, and applauding them because their lives uh, and, and uh, the things that they're doing in their lives are very, very um, in line with God's purpose for them. As a matter of fact, Paul says uh, that after he preached to them, they, instead of taking uh, decades and arguing back and forth with Paul uh, about the Christian living that they were shown by Paul and his companions there in Thessalonica, these Thessalonians really gleaned from Paul and really took to what Paul had to say. And they modeled their lives according to what God had given Paul to give to them. And it wasn't a fuss. It wasn't pulling teeth. They weren't wrestling with Paul, trying to keep some of the things that they uh, believed before Paul came on the scene. They modeled their lives based on what uh, God had shown them through the Apostle Paul. And they were living upright and uh, living according to what they had heard and what they knew. And they were modeling their lives after a fashion that they believed God wanted them to go. And Paul was applauding them and, and he was saying to them uh, in chapter one that they had been a, a, an example to the nations around them. So not only were they living their lives uh, in the fashion, in the vein uh, that Paul was trying to get them to live in, but they had gone further and they had begun to be uh, billboards for Christ in their living. They had began to be evangelists in the provinces, in the areas around Thessalonica. And they had begun to rub off and rub shoulders with the people uh, that were living wicked lives and living contrary to what uh, Christ had called us all to. And their lives was a model to all those in the provinces around Thessalonica. Um, and, and this had become a, a, a great, um, credit to the church, uh, of the Thessalonians. They were doing what they were called to do, what God had revealed to them, and they were living to the best of their ability, uh, in the ways that they believe God wanted them to live. Now. Uh, that brings me to where we're going to go in this sermon. I believe uh, you know that the title of this sermon is Reset, Realign, Restart. Um, I believe that um, some of the things that we can glean from this first book to the Thessalonians uh, is, is, is very important for us here, uh, especially within the time that we're living in, because the danger that we 
are facing now, the danger that many Christians around the world are facing now is trying to pinpoint when Jesus is going to come again. And that's not what we've been called to. We're trying to, 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 to use scare tactics and many uh, of our, our, our preachers and teachers have become alarmist in this day and age, but I really want us to really glean from this, this, this passage in scripture uh, as far as, and, and as well as other passages in scripture where we can glean um, that our job is not to know the times and dates, but I want to speak specifically from uh, the, 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 the book, that the epistle, this letter that Paul writes to the Thessalonians, and I want us to get a part of this thing. Um, I, the danger is that we want to, to pinpoint when Jesus is going to come again, and Paul makes very clear, look, uh, it's not for us to know. We, we, we don't even know it. We're not, I'm not even going to write to you about when Jesus is going to come again. I'm not even going to speculate uh, the times and dates uh, that we need to mark on our calendar. That's what happened to the Adventist church in 1844. See, they were marking dates and times where they believed that Jesus was going to roll back the clouds as a scroll. And the reality is that's what led to the great disappointment. And we as a church, um, uh, throughout the years, many, many groups and many sects in the church are still trying to determine uh, Jesus is coming during this time and Jesus is coming during that time. And the reality is, yes, we are getting closer to the day of Christ appearing, but as far as Jesus is coming May 1st, 2020, we cannot and we don't have the knowledge, we don't even have the capacity to begin to think like that. And we need to stop it. What our job is, and Paul makes it clear, uh, Paul makes it clear, uh, uh, we're going to read a little more scripture and we are going to see what it, what it, it, how it applies to us. Verse 3, in chapter 5, verse 3. For when people say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. See, um, there's a danger on both sides of this thing. First, there's the danger of us trying to pinpoint and actually dictate actual points in time when Christ is going to appear. And then there's actual times where uh, uh, teachers of the word, uh, amen, uh, uh, quote unquote, uh, will teach that uh, we're okay, uh, uh, nothing's happening, we're living in a good time, uh, live your best life, YOLO, do what thou wilt, uh, uh, take your time and do all this stuff, live your life before you come to Christ. You know, some people will, will preach that thing and some people will teach that thing, even if it's not in a church setting. Uh, some people, that's their mantra in life. Do what thy will and I, I'm going to live my best life and then I'm going to come to the Lord later on. But I suggest uh, too far to, to, to the left or too far to the right and too far to the left um, is a very dangerous thing. I believe that Paul was trying to get us to understand that we got to keep this pendulum right square in the middle um, because there are a lot of things to the right and a lot of things to the left that we could get distracted with. And when the Lord appears, we will be still unprepared like the, tip, the, the five foolish virgins. We will still be unprepared. And this is the reality. Look at, look at what Paul says. He says, and they shall not escape. In other words, <clears throat> those preaching <clears throat> peace and safety are, are getting, uh, getting desensitized, getting complacent with our actual uh, point in history that the Lord is coming soon and all these things will come to pass. We're getting complacent over here, complacency over here, and fanaticism over here uh, is a bad combination for us to be in when we are in a point in history where Paul says, we must be watchful and sober-minded. And Paul is not the only one that says this. Peter says this uh, uh, in his epistle as well, that we have to uh, uh, be, be sober 
and we have to be vigilant. We have to uh, be watching and waiting as watchmen on the wall. We cannot be like the the, the foolish uh, five virgins. We have to be watchful. And that brings me to where we're going to go in this message now. I believe that these catastrophic times and and these um, these these hard times in which we're living, where there's plague of locusts and there's fire burning down uh, over in Australia and plague of locusts over in Africa and here all on the globe, there's disease and pandemic uh, raging rampant and all these things are happening. I believe for us we must come to an understanding of the things that we're seeing. Matthew 24 makes very clear that there be wars and rumors of wars and uh, pestilences and famines in various places, earthquakes and all these things going on. And we see that and we're, we're witness to the things that are going on around the world. And we must be sure um, that we are not becoming complacent with these things. Now, I believe um, that these things that are, 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 are taking place in Earth's history should be used to our advantage. Pastor, what are you talking about? I believe that these things should help us, uh, even though catastrophes are becoming more commonplace, I believe their acts of and signs of mercy from God Almighty for his children to be watchful, to be so, or no, let, 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 let me rephrase that, to be vigilant, but start sobering up themselves because a lot, even in God's church, amen, are drunk with the distractions of the world and we are not really seeing clearly uh, uh, very, very, um, uh, red flag signs that we can use as a, a point where we should know, okay, we need to start getting our acts together. We need to stop being drunk with the wine of the world. We need to stop being sleep uh, when things are going on in the world. And we need to uh, get back to where God has called us to. So the first thing the first thing that I believe uh, that these catastrophic events that are occurring around the world um, is, is put in place and God allows these things to happen for us to number one, reset. Everybody say reset. Reset. I believe God is, is allowing these things to happen and as, as, as closer as we get to Jesus coming, you see that these things are happening um, in rapid succession, one after another. We can't get a rest, but I still believe there is time for God's people to reset. Pastor, what do you mean when you say reset? This is what I mean. Because many Christians today, many believers, and uh, 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 let, me, let me put quotations around that word believers. Many of us as believers, um, are in a daze right now uh, where uh, 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 Revelation talks about this the best way, where we are neither hot nor cold. We are lukewarm, and in our lukewarm state, we are neither uh, 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 progressing the, 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 the kingdom of God, um, and, and um, we are not tearing down the kingdom of God, we are doing nothing. And God would say, God says, look, I would rather you be cold, tearing down my kingdom, or be hot, or uh, building up my kingdom, but you're doing nothing? And you see all this time is wrapping up, yet you're sitting in the middle being lukewarm. See, I believe it's time for us to, to shake off the cobwebs in our brains, start thinking with this gray matter that God has given us, start really analyzing the things that have taken place, not even over the past 10 years, over the past year, these things that have taken place, and we really must consider where we are when it comes 
to our soul salvation and where God is when um when it refers to or when we're referring to is he coming soon or is he coming later if we take everything for face value and the things that have been occurring in this world we can clearly see that the coming of the Lord is sooner than later okay um, but it's not our job to uh, determine or pinpoint uh, the date that he's coming because the, 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 the danger if we were to pinpoint or if we were to mark a date on the calendar, we would live like hell up until that date and, and then we would get ourselves together the night before. That's not what God has called us to because while we're living like hell up until the day that Jesus comes, um, we are missing opportunities to witness to people who have never heard or who are in desperate need of relationship with the Savior. So our job in our, our state of complacency, complacency and our opportunity that God, per, God provides so, uh, so, so copiously with all of these, these, these catastrophic events that have been occurring and taking place in Earth's history, the first opportunity that we have is to reset. Get out of these, these, these stupors of unproductiveness. Get out of these places where uh, we, 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 we are, are lazing about and relaxing and, and doing what we will do and living our best lives. We don't have time for that. We need to reset. We need to go back to the starting line. We need to reset because we have missed something very, very drastically important if we believe that we are not supposed to be, uh, as, as the Bible dictates, the hands and the feet of Jesus. If we are just lazing about, I believe we really need to consider these catastrophic events as an opportunity and a, a, a privilege that God is giving us to get on our business, to be about his business. When Jesus was there uh, in the temple, when his mother and father were headed back to Nazareth, um, when Mary found Jesus, Jesus says, woman, did you not know I must be about my father's business? We have to be about our father's business. And our father's business does not constitute us uh, being couch potatoes and us uh, storing up riches for ourselves and, and us doing things to benefit ourselves and not worrying about the soul salvation of all these people in the world that we come in contact with. Our job is to be about his business. And if we are not being about his business, for the time that we are living in this world, for the time that we've been in our churches, being enjoying service, God says, it's time to be about my business. This is an opportunity for us first to reset. Our first, our first priority is to reset. reset. That means stop what you're doing if your trajectory is headed to the ground. If it is not about building the kingdom of God, if it's headed down to the ground, stop what you're doing right now and reset. You have an opportunity to get back to the starting line and start doing what God has called you to do. That's number one. He has told us, uh, he has shown us through this, this, this first uh, thing that we're looking, this first uh, uh, book that we're looking at, this letter of the Thess uh, Thessalonians, that we can reset. With all these catastrophes happening, we can reset. We can, we can get to the point where um, we can evaluate whether or not we are about God's business, and if we are not, we can stop and reset. You know, uh, when uh, you're playing video games for all those video game players, and uh, it, you 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 know when you you get beat down in the game, somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, whether it be a, a basketball game or it's it's a uh, a racing game, and you're getting beat really really bad. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I, I, I used to 
uh, in the middle of the game, if 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 things were not in my favor and it, it, it wasn't happening how I envisioned it, uh, being in first place and uh, uh, winning the game, amen, uh, if it wasn't happening how I dictated in my mind that it should happen, what I would do is uh, I would either, uh, there was a reset button, or I would go to the wall and pull the plug out so uh, all of the stats that I was gaining that were unfavorable to my, my character, uh, they would not show up on, uh, on my record. So I would reset and start back to a place where I know I was getting good and regular standing. So I would reset. That's the first thing. The second thing, the second thing that I believe that, that, that this that this, uh, this, this first letter to the Thessalonians will help us on or, and can help us on, especially in these times in which we're living, um, is uh, for us to have the opportunity to realign ourselves with what God has called us to. Um, if we look at the first couple of chapters of this first letter, we see that Paul is admonishing and, and, and encouraging the saints there uh, of the church of the Thessalonians uh, to keep doing what you're doing, keep living for Christ, uh, keep being a good example to the nations around you. And um, we can really take that for face value here today. We can realign ourselves, our living with what God has called us to. And we can go and we can see in chapter one uh, where Paul is admonishing them for, for, for uh, living right and giving up the things of the world and being totally committed to God. The thing about it is we can really see and we know ourselves, though we try to fool ourselves, we know ourselves whether or not our living, our actions, show whether we are truly committed to God or we are on the river, on the bank, serving God uh, when, when it's convenient. The, the reality is, once we restart, we, we have to start uh, 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 some introspection and we have to start looking at, at our motives. We have to start looking at our, our, our mentality. We have to start looking at our actions. We have to start looking at ourselves and we have to really, really consider whether or not is my living promoting Christ? If it is not, um, how can I, I, I start realigning myself with the road that God has called me to walk? How can I start, uh, start deviating too far from the left? And how can I start deviating too, too far from the right? How can I get on this path, this, this straight and, and narrow path that God has called me to? Um, does that mean that I have to reevaluate some relationships with some people? Absolutely. Does that mean I have to reevaluate uh, how, uh, how I am an example, not only to people that I come in contact with, but my family members and, and my work colleagues. Does that mean I have to reevaluate that? Absolutely. In order for us uh, to, to, to realign ourselves, we cannot believe or we cannot think that once we reset, we can continue the behavior and the mentality and the living that we had to reset from when we align ourselves. See, this, this, this is one of our biggest issues. We want God's power and we want God's, uh, 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 God's, God's um, Holy Spirit to be able to, to move mountains and to be able to convert many people. But in order for God's power to be made manifest in our lives, that means that we have to change. And if we believe that we can reset and still have the behavior we had to reset from and God's power be made manifest in us, then we, 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 got, we, we got another thing coming. Because the reality is, why would God allow his power to flow through us 
uh, for, for the converting of the soul. Why would God allow his Holy Spirit power to flow through us and we are still living like hell? The first thing that we have to understand is that in this alignment stage, there, there are some things that must take place. God will not allow us to minister in a fashion or, or God will not allow his power to flow through us if there's no change in us. Let me say that again. God will not allow his Holy Spirit, that, that, that soul converting power to flow through us if there's no change in us. And this is what I mean. When it comes to the soul salvation of others and, uh, and the, the ones that we rub shoulders with it and bump arms with it and, and we are, are frequent with, um, if there's no change in us, God's power cannot flow through us to those that need converting of their souls. We must come to a place in this alignment stage where we first allow God's Holy Spirit power to first change us before we try to change the world. If we don't allow God's power to change us, then we, our sphere of influence and our, our, our ability to reach uh, lost and, 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 and unknowing souls will seriously be hindered. So in this alignment stage, in this realignment uh, uh, portion, we have to allow God's power to work on us. Man, that's a hard thing. That's a deep thing right there. Because like I stated before, we want to use God's power But we don't want to be used by God's power. Uh, in other words, it's it's another situation like the sons of Sceva. Yeah, yeah, you remember in, in Acts 19, I believe, um, where the sons of Sceva uh, saw Paul going around Ephesus and he was healing and casting out demons and raising the dead, doing all types of supernatural things. And the sons of Sceva were, uh, the Bible deems them as itinerant Jewish exorcists. And they were going around uh, uh, conjuring up spirits and evil demons and stuff uh, because they believed that prestige was surrounded by those that were able to exorcise demons. And when they saw Paul do it, they saw something different in Paul. They saw, saw a different power in Paul that they did themselves did not possess. So they followed Paul around and they saw uh, what Paul did and they heard what Paul said. And then the next time that they went out to try and conjure out a demon, they, they said, um, we command you demon by the, the, the Jesus Christ that Paul proclaims. In other words, they were trying to use the power of the name without the name being inside them. We try to use the power of the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit being in us. Because oh, this is what constitutes the Holy Spirit being in us. The Holy Spirit starts changing things when he's in us. You cannot remain the same if the Holy Spirit is dwelling within your person because the Holy Spirit's job is to first change the vessel that is being used. It is not first to, 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 to uh, preach and proclaim to everybody else. The first soul that the, the Holy Spirit desires to save is the vessel that it's using. Oh God, help me preach this thing. So when we are in the realignment stage, we have to first allow the Holy Spirit uh, and we have to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit daily because if we want to use the Holy Spirit, we have to open ourselves to be changed by the Holy Spirit. We have to realign ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to start shaving off the fat, getting to the heart of the matter, start changing our hearts, start changing our minds 
so that we can be the first uh, convert that the Spirit has in our lives. So first, we have to reset. We have to stop the unproductiveness. We have to stop the lazing about. We have to stop uh, the disconcern. We have to stop the stupor that we've been in and get back to the starting point. That's, that's number one. We have to reset. Number two, we have to realign. In other words, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and start changing us first to get to a point where we can, number three, look at this, we can restart. If you look um, at, at the saints of the church in Thessalonica, they were excited to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were excited to, to share what they had learned. Um, in our, our profession of faith, in our faith that we, we profess to be disciples, disciples of Jesus Christ and we profess to be living for him, we are not getting to heaven on, uh, by ourselves. We are not getting to heaven by it. When salvation comes, we are not going to heaven by ourselves. But our job is to, um, just as Jesus proclaimed, to, to seek and save the lost. Though we have no salvation to give them, we have uh, a responsibility and an opportunity to introduce a saved soul to a savior. Right? But if we have not reset, if we have not realigned um, ourselves, not only by the Holy Spirit, but with the purpose that God has put in us to, to seek and save the lost, we cannot get to, 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 to phase three, which is to restart. And restarting constitute, constitutes us being of a mind, being of a spirit, that is desperate to see souls saved. Ah. The, the, the reality is, and Paul talks about this uh, starting in, in, in verse 4. He says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day, which is the day of the Lord, should overtake you as a thief. He says in verse 5, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. In other words, we are sons of God and we, we clearly see where we are and how we should be living. In other words, we are not of the night or of darkness. Living wickedly or, or being blinded. Verse 6, therefore, look at him. Look at him, look at Paul ta talking to us. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us, look at this. This is, the, this is what I was talking about before we, 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 we um, got into this sermon really good. He says, let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But, verse 8, and this is what I want you to pay attention to, verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So, we must reset, we must realign, and we must restart. Pastor, restart what? Verse 8 says it best. We have to put on the breastplate of faith and of love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Our job, when we restart, when we get back on the beating path, as a matter of fact, Paul mentions this over in chapter uh, 1 as well. He says, um, look at this. I, I, I want to show it to you. Uh, so uh, once I read verse 8, he says, um, Put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope. Our job when we restart is to show our faith, 
to show love and to show hope in salvation. Did you get that? Our job when we restart, when we get back to the place where God would have us be and doing what God would have us do, our job is to show our faith, to show the love, and to show the hope of salvation. Now look at look at uh, uh, chapter one. Let's look at chapter one. Look at this, Paul. Uh, I read, and this is chapter one. I read in your hearing verses verses two, and I'll go down through uh, when we need to stop. Um, this is Paul talking to the Thessalonians. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Look at verse three. Remembering without ceasing your work. Look at this. I want you to see this, your work of faith, your labor of love and patience of hope in your Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Look, oh my goodness, did you hear that? Paul says, remembering without ceasing your work. In other words, doing what you've been called to do, your work of, of faith, your labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Friends of mine, look at this. Our job, our job, according to Scripture, according to the church uh, in, uh, of the Thessalonians, our job is to be showing love. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, our job is to be showing our faith to be showing love and to be showing and be giving the hope of salvation. We cannot do that in a a a a a, 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 a complacent mentality. We cannot do that in a couch potato mentality. We cannot do that if we are lazing about, especially in this day and age where time is wrapping up. Not that we know a pinpointed time, but we know that Jesus is soon to come. We must do what Paul has called us to, what Peter has admonished us to. We must be watchful and we must be sober. While we are watching, while we are being sober, our job is to show our faith, to show love, and to show the hope of salvation. Because this world is literally in need of a savior. And this is what I this is what I don't don't understand. This is what I don't understand. How can we hoard so much good news in the Adventist church as if only Adventists are going to be in heaven? Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Listen, our job is what Jesus denotes. We must seek and save the lost. So don't use this time uh, uh, of of gray area in Earth's history, this 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 um these catastrophic events to be too complacent, and don't use them to be too fanatical. Our job is not to know when Jesus is coming, and it's not to say, "Oh, everything is all right." Our job is to maintain our relationship and and lead others to relationship with Jesus the Christ, to show them our faith, to show love, and to show our hope of salvation. First, we have to reset, we have to realign, and we have to restart. And once we get to the starting line, and once that gun pops off for us to be able to race towards the finish line, we gotta get moving, we gotta get on assignment, we got to be about God's business and seeking and saving lost souls. And when it's all said and done, and when Jesus blows his trumpet, breaks through the clouds, and the dead in Christ arise first, he will give rewards to those who have been faithful to what they have been called to. Friends of mine, these catastrophic events are not a call to be scared they are not a call uh, for us to, to, to recluse at this point in time, but they are a call for us to remain faithful in our service to God, 
for us to remain focused on what the finish line is and for us to give everybody an opportunity to be in the presence and to receive relationship with the Savior of the universe. Amen? Amen. I pray that you were blessed by this word this morning. I pray uh, that you are doing well, that your health is in order, and I pray soon that we will be reunited here on this earth, that we can worship together in the beauty of the holiness of God. I pray for you daily, and we are going to pray even now. Father God, we have read your word and we have seen. God, I ask that you would help us to see um, these catastrophic events not as a, 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 a point for us to be scared, but for a point for us to be watchful and sober, for us to realign and to, for us to reset, for us to realign, for us to restart working for you if we are not doing what you've called us to do. Father God, help us to be faithful. Help us to do what you say do. And Father God, when it's all said and done, may we introduce souls to you and may souls be saved as a way, uh, as, as a result of the way that you called us to live. Now give us the power to live and live our lives to the fullest in the ways that you called us to do so. Like the church in Thessalonica, Father God, help us to be examples to all those that we come in contact with. And God, we will give you all of our praise when it's all said and done. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayer. Be with us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen.